Welcome to another episode of Thoughts of a Techno Wizard. I'm sorry, becoming a Techno Wizard. And um, got a new software here, Flashback Express. Uh, I want to test a new system because I noticed just now, like, yeah, I haven't really been looking back at my other videos very much. I did it every now and then. But I noticed consistently there's always a lot of uh, pauses and like lagging and stuff like that with the streams. So I'm going to try a solution for just recording the screen. Um, so I'm going to see how this works. I already noticed some lag on my playback right here. So uh, I don't know about this one. Um, and it's weird. I wasn't able to set up my, my setup as usual where like the screen is over here and I'm looking over here and all this other stuff. So... I don't know, but this is a sort uh, short section, um, is and this uh, Anarchy Works book. So we're gonna read through this section and see how it turns out. All right, let's continue. So where we left off last time was talking about um, the how groups were coming together and stuff like that. I forgot what this chapter was. This section, what would prevent constant warfare and feuding? Yeah, was the idea that you know people work together when they form these communities and things like that. Where they actually care for one another you have less of this warfare um they show how a lot of the like states and nations are the ones that's creating this source of warfare and stuff like that um and which is good stuff so this last chapter or this last section of this chapter is, is talking about networks not borders and i'm very excited about it so let's dive in um as nation states evolved in europe over 700 years governments worked to worked hard to fabricate a sense of community on the basis of shared language, shared culture, and shared history, all of which were conflated with shared government. This fictive community service serves to foster identification with and thus allegiance to the central authorities to obscure the conflict of interest between lower classes and the elite by framing them as being on the same team and to confuse the good fortune or glory of the rulers with a good fortune shared by all. It also makes it easier for poor people in one country to kill poor people in another country by creating psychological distance between them. Very much so. Beautifully said, Peter Gelderloo. <laughs> on inspection, this notion that nation states are based on shared culture and history is a fraud. For example, Spain created itself by expelling the Moors and the Jews. Even apart from this, without the external, oh my goodness, without the central gravity produced by the state, Spain would not exist. There isn't a single Spanish language, but at least five, Catalan, Euskera, Galago, Castilian, and the dialect of Arabic, of Arabic developed in Morocco and Andalusia. If any of these languages were subject to careful scrutiny, more factors would appear. The Valencians might say, not without reason, that their language is not the same as Catalan. But if you put the seat of government in Barcelona, you would get the same suppression of Valenciano that's a, that, the suspend, uh, that the Spanish government employed against Catalan. Very well said once again. Like a lot of these nations, um, they don't create unity. They force an, an appearance of unity, right? By taking all these cultures, all these diverse languages and, and, and um, cultures and things like that and histories and heritages and trying to smash them together into this, you know, pasty, disgusting mesh of... Um, of a nation, right? Um, and this goes for the same of pretty much even here in America, especially here in America, where it's supposed to be a, a nation of immigrants, right? It's supposed to be a place where many different cultures can come together into a melting pot. And you sort of see it in some places, but very much so you see this um, trend where immigrants come in and by the second generation, many of them don't even know their own heritage, right? Instead, they, they, they become the most ardent, you know, um, uh, purveyors uh, or, or, you know, um, kind of champions of this American, American nationalism and American pride and stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's very concerning <laughs> because those same people are the exact same people who are, who are so-called conservative and so-called traditional, uh, you know, care about traditional values. And yet, you know, are the same ones, you know, dismissing their own cultural heritage values, right? Instead, they pick up this weird, you know, uh, quote unquote, American heritage, like the, you know, what we see down here in, in the South with the Confederacy, even though that was like nobody's heritage, 
the confederacy only existed for like four years like four to six years or something like it, it's it's not a heritage it was a brief moment in time where you know a bunch of races were trying to you know um form their own empire and so a lot of these people who cling onto the confederacy flag or any other american you know kind of traditional values or anything like that nine times out of ten are dismissing their own cultures right um which might come from some european you know they might have some interesting european cultures but many of them are just whitewash literally into just being white <laughs> right it's really it's really sad um but but as much as I have empathy for that it that's 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 like easy mode compared to what's done to you know people of color and their cultures where that's downright vilified and demonized and you know it's, it's said to be like the worst thing to happen to america and all sort of stuff so it's it's very very frustrating on on all on all accounts let's continue Without the enforced homogenization of nation stations, nation stations should be nation states, I think, there would be even more variety as languages and cultures evolve and blend with each other. Borders hinder this cultural diffusion and thus promote conflict by formalizing similarities and differences. Borders don't protect people. They are means by which governments protect their assets, which includes us. When the borders shift in a war, the victorious state has advanced Taking, staking its claim to new territory, new resources, and new subjects. We are plunder, potential cannon fodder, <laughs> potential cannon fodder, taxpayers, and laborers, and borders are the walls of our prison. Even without borders, there may occasionally occasionally be clear differences in the in the way societies organize. For example, one may attempt to conquer a neighbor or maintain the oppression of women, but decentralized border board but decentralized, borderless societies can still defend themselves from aggression. Let me drink some water. Quick. Stay hydrated. <laughs> a community with, with a clear sense of its autonomy does not need to see an invader across an imaginary line in order to notice aggression. People fighting for their freedom and their homes fight fiercely and are capable of organizing spontaneously. If there were no governments to fund military complexes, those fighting defensive campaigns would usually enjoy the advantage, so it wouldn't pay to go on the offensive. When European states conquered the rest of the world, they enjoyed certain decisive advantages, including unprecedented population density and technologies their victims had never, before, had never seen before. These advantages existed at a certain historical moment, and they are no longer pertinent. Communication is now global, population density and resistance to disease are more evenly distributed, and the popular weapons necessary for waging effective defensive warfare against the most technologically advanced of armies, assault rifles and explosives, are available in most parts of the world and can be manufactured at home. In a future without government, aggressive societies will be disadvantaged. Indeed, indeed. And even, even with right? People who had this superior technology, it wasn't even that clear of an advantage, right? That's what's interesting when you look back at many of these, these, these battles and things like that. It took them a long time, right? For even these uh, advantage places, like these, like the Europeans who had like a lot of guns and cannons and things like that. They didn't just wipe Africa off the map in one day or one battle or something. It took years, of campaigning if not decades right and a huge part of that was um was fostering infighting between nation states that was in africa all right same thing for many other of the uh native places in other places of the world like in america and stuff like that a lot of it was achieved right a lot of this conquering um and these these wins these victories was achieved through um establishing infighting within the cultures there and biological warfare right uh releasing diseases that never were in that 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 culture or that um those those peoples before so like the technological advantage wasn't even that much of an advantage as much as it is seen as like oh this is why there you can't have you know um these these uh you know uh stateless places and things like that because it, it wasn't even that clear cut um, but yeah, definitely today, the, the advantage is less so. Finally, 
Anarchists are breaking down borders today by creating worldwide networks, undermining nationalism and fighting in solidarity with immigrants who are upsetting the homog homogeneity of nation states. People on the borders can help abolish them by aiding illegal border crossings or supporting people who cross illegally, learning the language spoken on the other side, and building communities that span the border. People further inland can assist by ending their allegiance to centralized, homogenized culture and developing local culture. By welcoming migrants into their communities and by spreading awareness of acting in solidarity with struggles in other, excuse me, parts of the world. Awesome, awesome, beautiful. So we're going to end it there and we're picking up with the last chapter of the future um, next week. I want to see what this video ends up like. So we'll see. Uh, that's why I, I like that it's short. Um, but next week, hopefully I'll be able to do all this in like a day or a couple of days because I am have a PTO. Not next week, like not, not this week, you know, but starting on the thir thir 13th, I think it is. So expect a whole bunch of videos that week. And um, yeah, without further ado. I'll see y'all. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this section, all this other stuff. People can say that. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, I guess. You know, whatever. Um, and uh, let me know what you thought of, of this, the quality in this video. Uh, yeah. Without further ado, see ya. Bye-bye.